I've been in the city 10 seconds and the first thing I see is a naked man on a horse. God, why do I play these games? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Drive Hayes. I've spent years playing the best MMO games available. Now it's time to do the opposite and find the worst of the worst. I'm going to play them all so you don't have to. Join me on a journey through the most awful MMOs I can find. Drop a like on the vid and sub to the channel for more awful MMOs and ring the bell so you don't miss a single video. If you're enjoying the series, then consider supporting through the Patreon. Link in the description below. Today we're playing Mortal Online. It's on Steam, it's free, and it's 20 gigs, so let's give it a go. Quick note, if you've played this game before, your data has been compromised. Twice, Mortal Online had a major database breach and all emails were data mined, so if you want to try this game, please use a throwaway burner email. Mortal Online advertised itself as a fully PvP, fully hardcore MMO with full loot on death mechanics and no hand-holding. Now, I've been saying this for years, but players don't actually like full loot open world PvP games, but I am willing to give this a go. Creating an account feels properly old school. You've got to fill in a form on a website with black borders and everything. Start making a character, I get to choose a race, but why would you choose any other when this guy is clearly Robocop? Making your character background is actually quite interesting. You can choose the genealogy of your grandparents, mixing various tribes together to ultimately create you. It affects starting stats and skin colour. Once made, you can alter some more stuff. You can even change your age, which reduces your damage bonus, but doesn't make you any less muscular. This guy is 80. Grandad is ripped. I try to zoom in and oh god, the mouse zoom is reversed. Scrolling back moves you forward, scrolling forward moves you backward. Why, designers, why do you do this? Through hairstyles and moustache tweaking, I managed to accidentally recreate Hayahachi from Tekken. He even goes into a fighting stance when you click on him. Brilliant. The game begins, it's a first person MMO, standard WASD movement, with Spacebar being the most pathetic jump ever. You don't even leave the ground. But you can look down and see your feet, so that's nice. It's action camera, so locked to your mouse movement. Pressing tab brings up the overlay menu showing character stats, equipped items and the inventory. This also unlocks the cursor and lets you click around, but closing these menus doesn't relock the cursor. You have to press tab again. Pressing M would bring up the world map, but it doesn't because there is no map. No mini map, no world map, no nothing. All you've got is a compass and your own sense of adventure. Remember, Hardcore full loot MMO experience. None of that hand holding stuff. No maps. Maps are for wimps. So, what do I do? I talk to a guard. He's no help. I talk to a priest. He offers to send me to the ethereal realm, which is a polite priestly way of saying he'll happily kill me. Quick jump into the options menu, flick some graphics too high, and a toggle for full nudity. Hell yes. Hardcore full loot PvP. Dicks and all. Right, let's go. But seriously, go where? I have no idea what this game wants me to do. There is absolutely zero tutorial. Opening the overlay menu does show a suicide option though, so it's nice to know there's always that choice. It's actually quite a large button on the menu, so it's as if the game knows players will at some point think about this. In the middle of this far too spaced out village is a guide. He offers me basic tips and tricks. The first one is money making. He tells me to go northeast and talk to the gravedigger. Apparently the locals pay top dollar for zombie heads. I'm not judging locals, whatever gets you there. Walk through the village toward the graveyard and everyone's just standing around. There's no life, there's no movement. No one seems to have any personality beyond NPC. This feels creepy, like I'm being watched. Have you ever walked into an empty shopping centre or an empty restaurant and all the sales staff just stare at you deciding who's going to go over and talk to you? It feels exactly like that. I try to change some keybinds except nope, not too fast. The game lags and almost crashes after every keybind switch just to keep you on your toes. You'll get these flashing tips across the top of the screen. One keeps telling me I can hold shift to sprint. You want to see sprinting? Here it is. You ready? Walking. Sprinting. Walking. Sprinting. You see a difference? No? That's because there basically isn't one. Sprinting is just very slightly faster walking. Let's just talk about the levelling up quickly. As is a hallmark of games that are way too ambitious for both their budget and their designer's skill, you can level up everything. Your sprinting, your combat, your swimming, even your breathing. You get better at breathing. And no, I'm not making that up. Keep an eye on the text box and you'll see me level up breathing just by playing. 
You can also level combat moving and combat maneuvering, which are apparently two different things. Get to the graveyard and it is infested with zombies, like they are everywhere. There's more zombies than there are graves. They must be importing zombies from somewhere because there's no way these all came from here. Right, combat. Now I can tell you how this works because I did the combat tutorial, which happens after the graveyard killing bit, which is stupid. But here's the basics. Click and hold the left mouse button to attack. Hold down longer for a more powerful swing. Before you click, you've got to move your mouse to set your swing direction. So if you're moving to the right, when you click, you'll swing from the right or left or above. This is dumb. It means you can't just aim at your enemy and click because you have to move the camera a little bit at the start of every single attack. Your weapon also has an ideal range, which is again something that all hardcore MMOs seem to try and do and it never works. If you're too close during a swing, you'll hit the enemy with the handle of your sword and do less damage. Now I've trained in lots of martial arts weapons and let me tell you, being hit with the handle of something normally hurts just as much as being hit with any other bit of it. During my first combat encounter, this overlay box pops up and stops me from fighting, but it doesn't stop the enemy from attacking me, so I'm just standing there getting hit while I scramble to close it. Quick sweep of the graveyard, can't find the gravedigger, so I take a wander down into this massive mausoleum. Also, watch the lighting freak out and change as I get halfway down, as if the game panics and realises I'm not outside anymore. No gravedigger here, just a single zombie general. You can tell he's important because he's wearing a crown. He's just doing his own thing, so I leave him be and go and loot this treasure chest, which is locked. Back up the slope to the graveyard and... Does this mausoleum not have a door? There's no door. No nothing, not even a piece of fabric. Who built this? What do you do when it rains? Why do MMOs keep getting architecture wrong? I find the gravedigger, he was hiding round the corner. He asks me to kill some skeletons and says he'll pay for their heads. I don't know what he's doing with them and I don't care. You do you, gravedigger. Back to the awkward combat. Remember, I've got a lot to think about with this combat system. I can't be too close or I'll hit them with the handle, or too far away or I'll miss, and it's quite hard to judge depth in a first person game. I also need to be moving the mouse in a direction as I click and hold to guide the swing in that direction, so aiming is basically reset after every single hit, and on top of all that, every enemy is divided into various body parts. Body, arms, legs, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, and I need to aim for the right one. Kill some zombies and trade with the gravedigger. Trading is another system they've managed to make needlessly complicated. You see what the NPC has on the left and you would see your stuff on the right, but your inventory doesn't open automatically. You need to press I to open it. Selling something is easy. You just drag what you have to the trade window and click trade, but buying something is odd. See, if you drag what you want from their supply to the trade window and click trade, it fails because you actually need to manually drag the money you're paying with from your inventory to the window. And if you drag too much money, which is easy because all of your coins stack, it'll just give you that much money back in change. Why on earth do you need to do this? Just automatically take my money. This doesn't make your game immersive, it makes it pedantic. I buy a torch, equip it, and then discover when you're dual wielding, it's much more difficult to choose which hand you attack with at any moment. So I just bonk this zombie to death with a flaming torch. I'm getting low on health and stamina, so I use the rest skill. You basically just sit down, but you actually get better at the rest skill as you rest. You learn to rest faster. Resting improves your resting, intelligence, and meditation. Trust me, game, if sitting down and doing nothing made you smarter, I'd be in Mensa by now. Maybe I'll go kill the zombie general. He can't be too tough. He is way too tough. Time to tactically advance away from the enemy. I wonder if he'll just chase me all the way back up this slope and oh no, no, he just disappears. That's handy to know. I think I get the basics, but some help would be useful. So I click the in-game help button. You know what happens when you click the help button? Nothing. Literally nothing. No window, no box, no hints. Doesn't even open a browser window. It does absolutely nothing. Not even the game wants you to play it. I need a map. I feel that's the one thing that would make this bearable, so back to town. Let's find a merchant. Maybe the new player mentor will have some advice for me. You know what? He just might, but his dialogue box is cut off before it finishes, so I guess I'll never know. Brilliant screen resolution sizing of the game there. I spent 30 minutes trying to find a map. 
even an equippable one, even a text-based one, I speak to every single vendor in town. No one sells a map. I did, however, find what I think is another player upstairs in the bank called Dormag. Let's just watch Dormag for a second. Dormag tries to do something, in this case it's cast a spell, fails, and then decides to just give up and have a nap. Never before have I understood and identified with another player on such a personal level. I feel there's a bit of Dormag inside all of us. I think we are all Dormag on this blessed day. It's official. This game has no maps. I did a bit of googling while playing and you want to know something interesting? This section of the game I'm in right now, this buggy, glitchy, confusing, directionless, uninspired mess, this is the tutorial. This isn't even the main game. This is a specially built section called Haven, designed to prepare new players for the actual game. Ask the new player mentor about combat and he sends me west to the combat tutor. While walking I notice this large red beam of light in the sky. Working theory is this beam shows me whatever I last asked the mentor about. You may have noticed how the game sent me to the combat tutor after the money making tutor despite combat being needed for the zombie killing bit. Seems out of order. Almost like they don't know how to make a tutorial. Okay this bit, Jesus, this next bit right here. This is one of the worst things I've ever heard in a game. The combat tutor is fully voiced, and I'm going to play that voice for you in its entirety. So just listen. There is more to melee combat than most people realize. To be successful in the world, it's important you understand how to defend yourself. First, be sure that you don't get too close to your target when swinging, or you could hit them with the handle and not the blade of the weapon. Each weapon has a sweet spot where it delivers maximum energy. You should also hold your weapon back for a second to ensure that a maximum damage strike is dealt. Not all swings are alike. When fighting another player, the direction you swing from is very important. Try it out now. First, equip your weapon and enter combat mode with the X key. Now move your mouse to the left or to the right as you click the mouse button to attack. This will swing the weapon from that side. If you're having trouble controlling this, see the options menu in-game and ensure that control attack direction by mouse and control lock direction by mouse are enabled. You may also thrust by holding the alt key when you click. Practice these swings on a training dummy now, and when you feel you've got the hang of it, click next. So not only is this voiceover immensely boring, but there's a section where it tells me to test out the attacks and then click OK. But the only way I can test out the attacks is by closing the dialog box. And then when you do that, there's no way to open it again. You have to leave the area and return, and it pops back up. But then I find you can't skip the dialogue. You have to wait for it to finish speaking every single time. Then this happens, and I've not altered the in-game noise or music or ambient sounds in any way. This is actually how it sounds. This might sound funny, but this is unacceptable in a professional video game. Balancing audio levels isn't rocket science, and you can hire a voice actor within minutes. The actual combat tutorial does cover all the mechanics, even if it does so with god-awful voiceover, so now I get combat. Would have been super useful to know this before making me fight the zombies game. Wander around the village some more. I remember the priest offered to kill me, and right now that's sounding pretty good, so I calmly ask this reserved man of God to send me quietly to the ethereal realm. As per my request, he performs the respectful ritual of suplexing my entire head into the ground. Once you're a ghost, just talk to a priest to resurrect and boom, you're back, alive and ready to play more Mortal Online. You can also check out your own crippled body, although my face seems to have melted. Let's check out the eating and drinking system because this is a hardcore full loot PvP MMO, so of course it has a hunger system. I get some water from the well, open my inventory and... I eat the water. Also, the stats are shown like this. No numbers, just a sliding scale of various things from red to green, with little black arrows showing where the item falls on this scale. This is another idea that's great on paper and just so, so bad in practice. Just have numbers. Pop back over to the graveyard, as it's the only part with any gameplay so far, and bump into this guy. He says hi. 
I say hi, then we have a chat. He's apparently a long time player, so I ask about why the early game is so goddamn awful, and he's actually kind enough to answer, and we have a bit of a conversation. Tutorials are supposed to explain, inform, and prepare, to give a person the skills they need to survive a real situation, and this just doesn't. I know some games like to advertise the fact they don't hold your hand as if that's a good thing, and you know what, that's fine, but you still need to have resources available if I actually want to learn. This isn't just a parent not holding my hand and letting me learn, this is more actively slapping my hand away and spitting on me for even daring to want to play the game. This isn't a tough love parent, this is an abusive parent. The other player then brings a higher level character and heals me up with magic and wishes me well on my way. Wherever you are, Tekihatsu, you are the best part about this game so far. Zombies get boring, so back to town. The red beam seems to be taking me back to the combat instructor, so okay, whatever, I go back there. The grammar wasn't checked too well here, as one of the chat options is just, tell me about sword. I get told about sword and gain a skill, but I check the skill tree and I can't find anything. Judging by the quality of this tutorial so far, they likely just forgot to program anything in. How can a game with such awful everything else have such nice fire graphics? During our chat earlier, Tekihatsu told me the main game is much, much harder than this area and I should do as many tutorials as I can. So I'm determined to do at least a few more. The mentor can point me in the right direction. There's way too much empty space in this town. Having a massive open world is pointless if there's nothing to do in the world. An expansive scale means nothing if all you're expanding into is nothing. You're not cramming in more content or quests or gameplay, you're just saying, look at how far apart we can place buildings. It's stupid. Personal pet peeve of mine, this NPC tells me he will learn me the basics. Teach. The word is teach. You will teach, I will learn. You cannot learn someone a thing. This guy teaches me about magic. Well, I say teaches. He explains I'll need a spell book, some reagents to cast the spells, and then to drag the spells from the book to my hotbar to cast them. So he didn't really teach me anything. He just told me to buy books and do it myself. A bit like university. To cast a spell, you have to first charge it, then release it. You do this by pressing whatever hotkey you've put the spell on. I test this out by splashing a dog with a basic water spell and- Oh god! Oh god, no! 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 Leave me alone! I try to run away from the dog and this guard just straight up runs it through with his sword, killing the dog instantly. Damn. I guess every NPC in this game can die. Everyone in the game is mortal. Oh, I get it. I get the name now. The splash spell sucked, but Thunderlash sounds good, but I need reagents the shop doesn't sell, so no cool magic for me. Magic down, crafting next. The crafting tutor tells me to become an expert boa, I need to go to the library and read books on how to do it. So another apparent expert just telling me to go and read a book and figure it out myself. This literally is just university all over again. Pressing R on a skill bench activates it until the game suddenly realises you don't have that skill yet and closes the menu. I mean, it could perform the initial can this player use this object check before opening the menu overlay, but nah, I guess it prefers to do it this way. I'd love to read what this whole message actually says, but it just cuts off mid-word. I haven't edited that and I'm playing on a recommended resolution. This is a game problem and it happens with a lot of messages. I chat to a guard and ask about my mail. He then tells me about the law. What? I try again, and once again, wrong combo. So I ask about the law, and the developers have coded this wrong. Asking a guard about your in-game mail continues the conversation about the in-game law. You know what, honestly, I'm not even shocked. Being close to an animal such as these dogs adds what I think is supposed to be a growling sound, but it just sounds like a really hungry, grumbling stomach. Talk to the cooking tutor, and oh god, honestly, I am so done with this tutorial. Can I please go and see the actual game by now? I don't care about cooking. I will figure it out. Just show me the game. It has to be better than this. I spam click the help button because it's just the most accurate button to describe my feelings right now. I know it won't actually help, but it makes me feel better. You know what, screw it. If this game doesn't have a leave option, I'll just leave the village manually. Let's just pick a direction and run. While I'm running, let's just have a quick real talk about game design philosophy. I see open world games yell out again and again, and Mortal Online is very guilty of this. The do whatever you want gameplay style. They love to say, you can do whatever you want. You can start a guild or raid a castle or build a house. You can do whatever you want. Loads of other stuff. You can do whatever you want. Except no. You can't. You can do whatever the game designer put into the game because that's how games work. 
When you put a system into your game, the player can experience it. If you don't put it in, they can't. I've got so much backlash for my Life is Feudal video, and screaming fanboys have told me I can do whatever I want. Well, what if I want to go car racing, or play it as a real-time strategy game, or actually have fun? You can't do any of those things because they're not programmed into the game. There is absolutely no game where you can do whatever you want. I need to make an entire video on this, but god it's infuriating. It's do what the game designer added, and in Mortal Online's case they've added no story, no quests, no plot, no character journey, and no goals. So I can do whatever I want, provided what I want to do is run around aimlessly killing zombies and listening to god-awful voiceovers. I make it over the hill and spot a coastal plantation in the distance. The ocean, fantastic. Maybe I'll just swim away. I start swimming, but your armour has weight and I just sink to the bottom and drown. Drowning turns me into a ghost and actually this is much easier. I can just recreate the bit from Pirates of the Caribbean and run along the ocean floor as a zombie. Ah yes, our old friend the invisible wall. I was wondering when you'd show up. The nearest resurrection point that I know of is all the way back in town and being a ghost actually lets me travel way faster. I mean, I can't die twice and an on-screen notification tells me the server is rebooting in 60 minutes. Maybe me playing has overloaded it and it's not able to handle the sheer volume of players on the tutorial island. Okay game, if I can do whatever I want, let's set my own goal. Escape Haven. While ghosting across the land I see in the distance the thin flicker of another respawn point. Maybe that's a way out. Maybe I can travel there, respawn there and be out in the main game. Let's do this! I find a distant castle, guarded by a lonely priest. He resurrects me and then I find a treasure chest hidden in a bush. I loot the chest and feeling slightly guilty I might have stolen the priest's life savings, I run away before he can get angry. Am I still in Haven? Is this still the tutorial? I meet a goat. We become friends. If this is still Haven, then this tutorial area is way, way bigger than it needs to be. I have a nice sit down and my resting skill gets even better, so you know what? I just settle in, tucked away nice and safe inside this bush and I take some time to read some reviews of this game. These are the Steam player charts for the time that I was playing. These are some general reviews. They are mostly negative. But this is a fascinating response from the developer of the game on Reddit. A Reddit user asked why Mortal Online never succeeded and this is what the developer said. Let's read this together. We released too early. We are a small team and want to make a big, big game. When we were at our largest, we had maybe 20 coders and artists working on the game. After a couple of years, we had to release to get cash flowing in. Obviously, this was way too early as it often is. It took years before we were close to where we should have been at release. We had the Unreal Engine 3 engine very early and I don't think any Gears games had been shipped on the engine when we started out. It was an amazing engine, but parts like the user interface development was a nightmare and there was no terrain solution. Epic fixes these shortcomings after a couple of years, but by then we'd already spent a lot of time developing around the issue. For such a small team, it sure didn't help. I'm also... Okay, so I think a lot of people think they want to play a full loot sandbox. The idea of a completely free world is interesting, but in reality it's not at all for everyone. There are reasons why developers don't make these games. The crowd playing them and enjoying them is small. They are, however, incredibly dedicated, but if you want to make some money, you won't aim for a small, dedicated crowd. On top of this, we went overboard on a lot of features for no reason. When we built a weather system, we built a system with cold fronts and warm fronts. We simulated weather. It's a cool idea, but in reality, don't add anything and takes a whole lot longer to build. We did this to a lot of systems, made them incredibly complex for no reason. So, the developers of a small MMO admitting the following. They aimed way too big, they released way too early, they used the wrong engine or didn't understand how to use it, they didn't do market research for who was actually going to play their game, and they added in far too many needlessly complicated systems. This is the developer of the game admitting they've made all the mistakes I've tried to tell people about for literal years. Please God, if you are making an MMO, think long and hard about all these points. And what do you think they're doing to fix all these glaring issues? Maybe improve the game, maybe make the tutorial better? Nope. They are making Mortal 2. Maybe it's best this way. Mortal 1 is old, flea infested and limping. Seems the kindest thing is to take it out back and shoot it in the face with a shotgun. Three hours later and I am so damn good at resting. Also my intelligence and meditation has risen so much I'm basically a monk. Can't be that clever dude, you did spend three hours sitting inside a bush. 
My only friend, the goat, is ignoring me and this insult cannot be forgiven, so I kill it and for some reason it explodes when it dies. I tried to cast some more magic, but apparently you can't cast magic when you have a weapon equipped, so I need to unequip all the stuff I'm holding before you can mage. What if you wanted to carry a torch into a dimly lit dungeon and cast magic? Ha! You can't. Do anything you want! But not that. I spot some thick black smoke rising in the distance, possibly a campfire, maybe a burning castle, don't know, but it is interesting enough to at least go and check out. Between me and this interesting thing is more water. Now I'm not heavy enough to sink this time, but swimming is another skill that has to be leveled by doing it. As my swimming sucks right now, have a look at the full real-time swimming speed. I haven't altered this footage. Along with swimming super slowly, there's constant screen judder. It just shakes awkwardly for no reason. And when you run out of stamina from swimming, you just sink. So you have to stop often to catch your breath. Also, if you place the camera just right, you can clip into and out of the water as you bob up and down. 10 minutes later, I make it to the other side and the climbing out is also broken. Your character will clip up and down the bank while the game tries to figure out if you're in the water or not. I'm asking myself, why do I want to leave the tutorial? And honestly, it's because I want something, anything to actually happen. An enemy, a cool bit of scenery, a hint of story. This is a dead, empty world with nothing charming and I'm fed up with it. It's all very well shouting you can do anything, but if there's nothing to actually do, then your anything is basically nothing. Do nothing, that's what the game's tagline should be. 30 minutes of walking later and I made it to the black smoke. It's a volcano. That is actually quite cool. There's nice stones and the debris around the base and smoke is rising into the air nicely. Hopefully we'll see some hot bubbling lava. No, no lava, just smoke rising from what is clearly a burning hot floor. No, no floor's fine. You can walk all over it, no problem. There's an interesting looking seal, but it's, well, sealed. What an anti-climax. At this point, I tried to Google a map of Haven. There is none. So I Googled how to leave, and here's what I found. Veterans of the game praised this area for being the best area in the game. You could only experience this area if you had a new tune, so players actually deleted their old characters just to start fresh here and experience it. This bit, according to old players, is considered the best part. There's nothing out here in the wild, so I head back to town, but on my way back, I bump into this rather interesting looking fortress built right into the side of a mountain. Let's explore this. Walk down the hill, across the grassland, get attacked by a dog, and die. When I die, the character model remains standing, but the camera detaches and falls down, letting me stare at myself for a moment. I guess we're exploring this as a ghost. It's really, really odd. A small open courtyard, long corridors with nothing in them, a huge dining hall and a tiny kitchen that aren't connected. It's also very maze-like and I get lost for a bit. Why do no game designers look up actual plans of old medieval castles and then just copy that? You don't need to create what you think a castle might look like. We have actual castles. We know what they look like. Just make it like that. There's no story here or event or journey. It's just an abandoned place. I need to head back to the starting town. It's the only place with any content. It'd be quicker to make a new character to do this, but I don't want to waste all the hard-earned resting experience. Seems if you're a ghost, you can float through scenery, but only certain scenery. Maybe they just haven't added collision to these rocks. Do anything you want, unless you want to not clip through scenery. You can't do that. I'm back in the far too spaced out village. It's daytime now, and the place actually does look much nicer. Another pet peeve of mine, we have a day and night cycle, but why? Don't have a day and night cycle unless it actually matters. The progression of in-game time is a mechanic, but unless you're going to tie some actual substantial systems to that mechanic, just don't have it. Now I discover something and half of this is me being dumb and half is the game being designed badly. You can drag the NPC chat boxes. And if you talk to the mentor, that's the one that has the chat box clipped off at the bottom, you can drag the chat box up so it actually shows all of the options. And at the bottom, he tells you how to leave the tutorial. 
Why on earth would the standard positioning of a text box make it clip out of the screen when you could just not do that? You know what, whatever, it doesn't matter. We know how to leave. Head south and talk to the captain on the docks. We have a quest! Southwards! Maybe the captain is inside one of these huts. No. Captain? Where are you? Can we just take a minute and examine these grapes? If you're going to make an expansive tutorial, please make the grapes 3D models and not some 2D sprites crossed together in the middle. I expect this from PlayStation 1 games, not from modern MMOs. Walk through the wheat field and recreate the scene from Gladiator. Climb this mountain to get a good vantage point. Gotta find the docks. While up here, I can see the tutorial is actually pretty damn big, but it's also empty. It's just a tiny village with a huge amount of nothing. Nothing to do, no goals, no tasks, just a virtual space with no real gameplay. Honestly, this whole thing was a massive waste of your resources. Your tutorial has left me more confused about the game and the bad voice acting I am never ever going to forget. Climb down the mountain, slowly. Don't want to fall and die and have to return to a priest and God damn it. But it seems we have something called mercy mode. I think it just lets you get back up if you're not immediately attacked after death, but it's likely to be the game just feeling sorry for me. Or amazed someone is still playing it after five hours. We are almost at the docks. Finally, Captain Sidden, you have no idea how happy I am to find you. Take me away from this horrible place. Leaving the tutorial of Haven places you into the main city of Tindrem. You can't take any items with you and all your crimes are forgiven. You're also given a free character stat reroll because this is the kind of game where if you don't build your character properly, you are forever hobbled and you will never reach your potential. Tindrum tries to load and we're treated to a white screen for like two whole minutes before the city fades in and it's much grander, a mix of ancient Greek and Roman buildings. Columns holding aloft pointed roofs, paved city streets, NPCs wearing the traditional Greek clamis robes and I've been here 15 seconds and there's a naked guy on a horse. Now it's pixelated for YouTube, but, and you're gonna need to trust me on this one, there is more detail on that penis than in the entire tutorial. There are so many polygons, it looks like a high definition photo. It is insanely detailed. The naked man and I chat for a while, then go our own ways. He's probably thrilled he had another player to show it off to. It's nice to know that I'm useful. A town crier, these guys always have useful information. Apart from this one, it seems, because he won't talk to me. Do anything you want, apart from talking to an NPC whose literal job is to talk to people. There is a huge arrow pointing toward a graveyard, and after asking some local guards, I realise this game has exactly one main way of making money, killing the undead and selling the heads. That's basically it. You kill zombies, sell zombie bits, and buy equipment so you can kill zombies faster. That is the PvE gameplay loop. This bridge reminds me a lot of the opening bridge from Dark Souls, and that is likely the only time Mortal Online has ever been compared to Dark Souls. I get a bit lost and can't seem to find the graveyard entrance. I do, however, find this urn on a rooftop filled with coins, so hey, loot. The scenery is still an odd mix of styles. It's more cohesive than most, but it's still very video gamey. As in, there's way too much space between places and there's nothing to make the streets feel real or lived in. Finally managed to find the graveyard. It's in the dead center of the city. Get it? Dead center? Bad puns aside, who the hell builds a city like this? Imagine how the meeting of the city plans went. And directly in the center, I've considered a fountain or a castle or just a huge statue of an extremely detailed penis, but I've decided to go with a giant graveyard. That way the whole city can smell of death. Right, so now I am here. Here's the plan. I'm going to spend an hour killing zombies. That's right, I am going to grind the only PvE gameplay mechanic this game has for a full hour and see if it gets fun. Well, that was the plan. But after 10 minutes, I am carrying so many zombie heads, my movement speed is reduced to this. I guess it's time to find a shop to sell my stuff to. If only I had a map or any idea of where a shop is. No worries, I'll find one. Let's go. Let's go. Let's keep going. Catching up to this guard to ask him where I can buy and sell things took forever because he moves quicker than I do and kept walking off. 
he tells me to go exactly 230 meters east, which is a very, very specific direction. I run to the shops! Running... to the shops. Here we go, running. Finally, I managed to sell all my loot for the princely sum of two gold. This guy also sells armor, so I kit myself out and then look for a weapon. I look for a weapon. And I spend a full 30 minutes looking for a weapon. Also, look at how these vendors are laid out in this market. I've never seen a more video game way to organize a market. Lines of identical stalls with silent, still NPCs manning each one, all facing in the same direction with absolutely no personality. Ultimately, I had to Google it. There's no weapon stall here, as all weapons must be player made. So I find a weapon crafting bench, and I can't use it because I haven't found the weapons crafting tutor. So I Google a map of the tutors, and there isn't one. Do anything you want, unless you want to make progress, in which case you can't. I need to leave this city. This whole gameplay loop seems to be kill the undead to make money to buy stuff to kill the undead. Maybe think about PvP, but you can't PvP because that needs other people. Finally, we reach the gates of the city, the great unknown, unlimited potential adventure. Who knows what my story will be? Onwards to possibility. Do anything you want, unless you want to break into another player's house, because you can't do that. This mailman has no mail for me, so is clearly useless and therefore must die. Attacking the mailman starts a super complex and involved combat script. Watch as he defends himself. The trade broker was a witness to that murder, so he also must die. Watch as he defends himself. Do anything you want. And that's what you want to do, is expect a realistic NPC response. All right, I'm done. I've been playing seven hours. I'm going to find a nice mountain to die on. Mortal Online was the result of a small team aiming way above their skill level, and instead of choosing one or two systems and making them good, they chose 30 or 40 and made them all suck. It's a classic example of biting off more than you can chew, over-promising and under-delivering, and almost every new MMO does it. Open worlds don't matter if they are empty, systems aren't fun if they're not refined, and gameplay isn't designed if it relies on other players to actually exist. The fantasy of this was much better than the reality. In your head, it's sleek, gorgeous, and regal, but in actuality, it's overly ambitious and ultimately disappointing, which is why the final rating for Mortal Online is a far too detailed penis out of 10. Cheers for watching. If you want more worst MMO ever videos, then drop a like or sub to the channel. A massive thank you to all my Patreon supporters and my Twitch subs who make all my videos possible. And comment down below with any game you think deserves the title. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and Discord. And as always, have a great day.